um, good morning and welcome to one more lecture of uh, ENT auto laryngeology and in this one we are going to discuss this infections and inflammations one is about uh, pharyngitis and laryngitis so epiglottitis which is here is basically uh, as you know epiglottis is a part of uh, larynx right so uh, epiglottitis is a form of laryngitis but uh, this one have uh, a different uh, significance clinically so that's why like I put it extra epiglottitis but of course epiglottis is a structure of larynx so when we say laryngitis we mean everything lies like um, epiglottitis and pharyngitis so all these things are there <clears throat> so now to start with um, first of all we are going to discuss um, pharyngitis um, so pharyngitis is again two things one is acute pharyngitis and one is chronic pharyngitis but as you know uh, we had already uh, gone through tonsillitis and pharyngitis like I told you tonsillitis and pharyngitis they are same things because um, tonsils uh, the epithelium is in continuation with the pharynx and uh, one of the tonsil which is the first one I told you like that is the most common one which occurs with pharyngitis so of course we had covered that so acute pharyngitis is very common and simply it can occur due to viral and bacterial infections okay being viruses are the most common one and uh, in the bacterial pharyngitis you know one of the very very important thing is uh, acute uh, streptococcal pharyngitis <coughs> which we also called as strep throat and uh, whenever it is caused by group a beta hemolytic streptococci or G-A-B-H-S streptococci or S streptococci so G-A-B-H-S or group A beta hemolytic streptococci uh, of course like that that's make a very important thing because uh, uh, that can cause some serious complications like rheumatic fever as well as uh, post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so this is about acute uh, pharyngitis and as we have discussed acute pharyngitis with tonsillitis um, in this lecture I am going to talk more about chronic pharyngitis so what are the features of pharyngitis like no matter acute or uh, chronic of course like uh, <laughs> like there will be sore throat fever malaise um, uh, things like this right or uh, dysphagia of course if it, the condition is more like severe or moderate and when we open the mouth of the patient what we are going to see is um, uh, reddish mucosa uh, sometimes enlargement of tonsils can be there and uh, uh, swelling of the uvula and all these things so uh, as one of the very uh, serious complication of acute pharyngitis which is caused by group A beta hemolytic streptococci is, can be rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so in that case we always go for a test clinical test you can say a bed uh, office test that is called as um, uh, throat swab or we can do a uh, like there is uh, strips available uh, which are in the GP's office and like they can they can take take the strip from your throat and quickly check like either you are having a strep throat means like sore throat caused by streptococcus uh, uh, streptococcus or beta hemolytic streptococcus okay so we can we can do, do this thing because uh, like of course whenever there is any bacterial pharyngitis so they need antibiotic treatment so 
uh, like viral causes of pharyngitis can be anything, you know, any kind of viruses can cause. Uh, well, like when it is when when it is caused by group A Kawasaki virus, it is called as herpanchina. Rest it can, it can be caused by any any kind of viruses. So of course, like uh, as we know, uh, uh, the most common causes of viruses will remain same, guys. What we have discussed before: rhinoviruses, influenza, para influenza, and all those things. And uh, Talking about uh, uh, the causes, uh, like discussing the chronic pharyngitis. Chronic pharyngitis, pharyngitis is, of course, chronic inflammation of pharynx, and it is characterized by hypertrophy of mucosa, and as well as seromucinous glands and subepithelial lymphoid follicles, and even the muscular coat of the pharynx. And it have it have two types: chronic catheteral pharyngitis and chronic hypertrophic hypertrophic is also called as granular pharyngitis so chronic catheteral and chronic hypertrophic right so <laughs> etiologies are many many factors play a role in causing pharyngitis for example the first one you can see someone who has persistent infection somewhere around in the neighboring regions like dental infections so what happened for example whenever there is any uh, infection in the neighborhood like chronic rhinitis or chronic sinusitis the discharge all, all continuously goes down to the pharynx and provides provides a constant source of infection so this can cause hypertrophy of the pharynx or the infection can be in the tonsils, in the tooth, or anywhere like, like this area. So like that will lead to chronic pharyngitis. One of the thing is mouth, mouth breathers. For example, someone who have obstruction of the nose due to nasal polyps, for example. Or many people have allergies. Or someone have obstruction due to adenoids. Or many people, they have protruding teeth which prevent their lips to close properly so that their, their mouth remains open and some of the people they are habitual like they, they breathe by mouth so breathing by mouth basically expose your pharynx to the air which is not filtered by the nose and you know nose one of the function of the nose is to decrease the temperature as well of the inspired air so the air is not filtered, many infections can pass, many, sorry, not, uh, bacteria, viruses can pass. Uh, it is going to expose your airways to like uh, uh, at different temperatures, of course, like same like outside because the nose uh, also help in decreasing the temperature. So they have increased chances of having chronic pharyngitis. Number third, what you can see chronic irritants like people who smoke or chew tobacco and eat spicy food. Then there is environmental pollution. Smoke and dust is everywhere as we know. Okay. Environmental pollution can be there and then faulty wise production. So, this one is like not so common like this one. But it is less often realized, but an important cause of chronic pharyngitis. Like any people who is using excessively, using their voice, you know. Uh, especially, you know, the professions in which you have to. Uh, like teachers, you know, singers who have to use a lot of voice and all these things. So, they may have this, this thing. So what are the symptoms of chronic pharyngitis is uh, dense comfort or pain in the throat, foreign body sensation in throat and it could be tiredness of voice. Like a patient cannot speak for a long time. Okay. And uh, their throat become achy. Cough can be there. So the signs is more important, like in chronic catheter and in chronic granular, 
you can see in cathedral there is uh, you will see the congestion of posterior pharyngeal wall with engorgement of vessels fossil pillars may be thickened increased mucus sec secretions which may cause pharyngeal mucosa whereas in chronic hypertrophic granular the pharyngeal walls they appear thick and adipatous with congested mucosa dilated vessels posterior pharyngeal wall may be start with reddy reddish nodules okay <clears throat> Lateral pharyngeal bands become hypertrophic. Uvula may be elongated and appear in images. So, now the treatment in every case of chronic pharyngitis, first of all, we must have to make a diagnosis. Either it is due to misuse of voice, either it is due to pollution, either there is some secondary problem like nose is blocked. So first of all, you will find the etiological cause and then you will decide the treatment. For example, we can ask the patient for voice rest or speech therapy <coughs> or we can ask the patient to do warm saline gar gargles, especially in the morning or soothing and relieve discomfort. Also. What you can say, uh, uh, what we can do is like we can do cautery of granules if, if they are found. Okay. Of course, avoidance of the irritants. So, uh, like this cautery is the burning, you can say. You can see the cautery. Uh, so, sometimes, like uh, the nodules or the throat is sprayed with local anesthetic and granules are attached with 10 to 25 percent silver nitrate to to to, de to, to remove them so <clears throat> this is how a chronic pharyngitis is treated and these are the causes uh, the most important thing in chronic pharyngitis is you will found a long history of uh, throat pain or throat problems and when you will examine you will found the nodules the reddish nodules on the on the pharynx okay so it means like they, they become hypertrophic so this is very important so <clears throat> other than this like uh, there is epiglottitis right now, to tell you the importance of this condition, epiglottitis, and why I am teaching you this thing as a separate thing, because before the incidence of this condition was very high in pediatrics or in, in kids who were not in, immunized. But nowadays it is very less common because almost all the children who are born, they get immunization. And they get uh, vaccinations against Haemophilus influenza B, HIV. So epiglottis is the structure, by by the way, which which covers the entrance or inlet of the larynx. And whenever we, for example, swallow, epiglottis is the one which makes sure, like uh, like nothing which should go into the voice box or the larynx, right? It is the covering of the inlet or it's a guard of the inlet of the larynx. So whenever there is inflammation of that, of course, it is called as epiglottitis. And it's acute inflammatory condition confined to supraglottic structure, epiglottis, airy epiglottic folds and arytenoids. There is marked edema of these structures which may obstruct the airway. So this condition can be life-threatening. Okay. Like one of the division between, you know, acute and chronic condition is what? For example, we are right now talking about, about larynx, right? So, for example, laryngitis or pharyngitis, like anyone who have uh, inflammation for less than two weeks, we call it as acute and whenever the inflammation is for more than two weeks, we call it as chronic. So acute laryngitis as well as chronic laryngitis. So, uh, now to start with epiglottitis, 
So like this is like how it was. Uh, epiglottitis is a medical emergency that may result in death if not treated quickly. And this is the guy who first discovered it. Okay, the etiology of epiglottitis can be many. As you can see over here, right? There is a lot of uh, etiologies, bacteria, okay? But mainly it is due to bacterial infection, okay? And I told you about this one, Haemophilus influenza B. And nowadays it is not so common because of vaccination. And nowadays, whenever we found bacteria, you know, we mostly found the streptococcus pneumonia or streptococcus aureus or streptococcus pyogenes. And one of the causes of uh, epiglottitis can be traumatic, like drinking hot water, eating solid foods or burns, for example. Okay. Now, they are the one which, which can cause epiglottitis. So, talking more about this one. It is a serious condition. It affects like when, when vaccination is not so common and even now if the children they are not vaccinated against hemophilus influenza what can happen uh, they can get serious infection like epiglottitis okay affecting most of the time two to seven years of age of kids and the symptoms are Sudden onset of symptoms is there and rapid, like and there is rapid progression. It's a very rapidly progressive condition. So they may have sore throat or dysphagia, which are the common symptoms in adults, but dyspnea and strider are the common symptoms in children. Okay. So sore throat or dysphagia, difficulty swallowing, are the common symptoms in adults. Whereas dyspnea shortness of breath or difficulties in breathing and strider you can hear the breathing sounds without using any stat okay which are they are the common presenting symptoms in the children and they are so much progressive that you know the epiglottis can become so swollen that it can completely block the airways and can result in death the fever sometimes it go up to 40 degree Celsius high grade fever can be there. Okay, so when we examine these patients, okay, one of the thing, guys, you know, if we suspect that the child is having epiglottitis, try not to examine the mouth by using or by causing any irritation to the back of the mouth. Why? Because you can irritate and there can be spasm. The child can die because of that. So, for example, when we always depress the tongue with the tongue depressor, okay? So what we can see, maybe we can see a red and swollen epiglottis. Indirect laryngoscopy can be done and can show edema and congestion of the epiglottis. But we don't go for this examination. Why? Because it can change the condition to complete obstruction. So that's why this kind of examination should be done in a setup where all the procedures or emergency procedures are present. Okay. All the resuscitative, just to see the larynx, right? It is. For, uh, laryngoscope sorry it is for indirect uh, indirect uh, laryngoscope like of course you can put it inside the mouth you would like you will throw the light uh, by the help of the torch okay this is the laryngoscope you know laryngoscopy which obviously they can see it on the camera so even indirect laryngoscopy should be done in a facility where all the resuscitative uh, things are there okay one more thing which we can do is basically uh, uh, what we can do is uh, basically we can 
other investigation which we can do we can do laryngoscopy we can do blood test cbc yes or crp of course cbc will show increased wbcs either lymphocytes will be increased or neutrophils will be increased depending on the, what, what is the type of the organism which is causing this condition. If airways are compromised or going to be compromised, you can we can do arterial blood gases, we can do blood cultures to check what kind of organism is there. Other immunological testing looking for antibodies or specific bacteria or viruses. We can also do X-ray. And what we will see on the X-ray is very interesting. Uh, when the epiglottis is too much swollen, on the X-ray you can see it like a thumb. A swollen structure is completely visible on the X-ray like this. This is called as thumb sign because the epiglottis becomes swollen and become thick and it appears like a thumb. So it it is called as what? It is called as a thumb sign, thumb sign or thumb print sign. But a normal x-ray does not exclude the diagnosis. Like if the x-ray has come back normal and you cannot see the epiglottis, it doesn't mean you will say that, okay, the patient don't have epiglottis. It's not like this. So we can also do CT scanning, but most of the time it is not needed. They are, they are showing the epiglottis by the help of laryngoscopy. And then, of course, we go for the treatment. Okay. So, remember, guys, it's it can be emergency. It can be dangerous, right? So, hospitalization is important. We hospitalize the patient because there can be danger of airway obstruction. So, after that, what can be done? Of course, it's a bacterial infection. And we, like, uh, most of the time we give them ampicillin or third generation sphalosporin, which are effective. Okay. The procedure they are showing is basically called as cricothyrotomy. Like, if someone, this area is blocked, of course. So... To maintain the airways, you know, they can put a tube directly here or they can cut this area so that the patient can breathe at least. Hospitalization antibiotics, we will go for ampicillin or third generation sphalosporins. Both of them, they are effective against hemophilus influenza. Of course, the route is decided on the condition of the patient. IM or IV can be given. We can give them steroids. hydrocortisone or dexamethasone again they can be given IM or IV steroids basically decrease the inflammation decrease the edema and may protect the patient from tracheostomy or cricothyrotomy provide hydration humidification and oxygen and if the patient condition is not good so maybe we can think of intubation or tracheostomy. You can see the tracheostomy. Okay. Now, what is tracheostomy? Again, this point is very important. And uh, tracheostomy is a procedure, guys, basically, uh, uh, in which, like, uh, we, they, Cut it open as you can see over here, right? Uh, by the way, uh, like we, we should all know what is the difference between cricothyrotomy, uh, intubation, okay, and tracheostomy. Why? Because uh, all of them they are there uh, to maintain the airways, okay? So Tracheal intubation, as you know, that uh, uh, in that one, of course, like what, what they do is like uh, they put a tube from the mouth 
inside the uh, like which goes from the mouth directly to the trachea uh, for example when they have to put someone on mechanical ventilation or when they have to put someone or connect someone with a ventilator okay so they can do this tracheal intubation so there are different indications for tracheal intubations as well for example someone who is not conscious of course their airways can get blocked someone who have airway obstruction and things like this cricothyrotomy as the name shows cricothyrotomy okay it is basically an incision which is made through the skin and cricothyroid membrane and if you, if you don't know what is cricothyroid membrane like you can see the anatomy lecture it is a, a membrane or you can say a ligament which is present between the cricoid cartilage and thyroid cartilage that's why it is called as cricothyroid membrane okay and this cut is made simply to establish the airway in life-threatening conditions for example someone who have foreign body uh, inside the airways someone who have epiglottitis someone who have facial trauma someone who have angioedema angioedema is like a condition in which there is swelling of uh, the face as well as the airway the structures around the airways okay so uh, simply the indication is to maintain the airways okay and all the things for example foreign body or trauma or inability to intubate or uh, then we go for this of course first of all we try intubation if the intubation is not possible then cricothyrotomy is done and trachea tracheostomy or tracheotomy okay it's a procedure in which uh, like uh, we can make an incision on the interior side of the neck okay and we open it so that uh, we can put uh, something directly into the trachea of course tracheal intubation means you are putting directly something into this uh, you are putting something into the trachea but again that pipe is coming from the mouth okay but here you are putting something inside the trachea directly through the skin so we can put directly uh, the pipe inside the trachea okay uh, so this is again all of these are simply to maintain the airways so one of the like some of the indications to for tracheostomy is like to emergency in like to maintain the airways in emergency for mechanical ventilation and uh, someone who have like the upper airways are blocked like epiglottitis right and things like this so of course we go for this thing so uh, there are different techniques to do this tracheostomy like I, I don't think so you you need to learn them as well if you want to learn that's good but like there is no special need to go in detail for that so tracheostomy is a surgical procedure which cutter opening is made in the trachea the surgeon inserts a tube into the opening to bypass an obstruction, allow air to get into lungs or remove secretions. Indications, laryngeal obstruction, secretion retention in the lower airways, prolonged artificial ventilation and pro proposed surgery prior to this thing. So this one is like the tracheostomy tubes guys, they're showing you. So first of all, we select the size, the material with or without balloon or cuff. And these are the post-operative complications of tracheostomy, like there could be subcutaneous emphysema, air trapped inside under the skin. There can be pneumomediastinum, the air is trapped into the chest, pneumothorax, as you know, in the pleural cavity, bleeding or difficulty in decannulation. So you can see over here. Okay, tracheostomy tubes, follow up. Con Continue taking all antibiotics until the full course is completed. In the event that a breathing tube had to be placed through the neck, follow up with the surgeon to have the tube removed and make sure the site is healing well. Okay, these are the injuries to the larynx from outside and from inside. Okay, 
so we are not going to discuss that okay so uh, what kind of uh, entry should the larynx can occur okay so uh, now we are going to go through to our next topic which is called as uh, laryngitis okay laryngitis as I told you uh, can be acute and can be chronic and uh, one of the thing I told you like it depends on the uh, time period like simply less than two weeks of inflammation is called as acute more than two weeks is called as chronic the ultimate thing is like whatever it is acute laryngitis or chronic laryngitis guys it is going to result into what hoarseness not just hoarseness but like with other symptoms with hoarseness right what is hoarseness? Hoarseness is simply defined as change in voice quality. Okay. Which can be voice harshness to voice weakness. Okay. Dysphonia is alteration in voice quality whereas aphonia is absence of the voice. It's called as aphonia. So, acute laryngitis, again, uh, the causes of acute laryngitis could be viral, could be bacterial, could be uh, mechanical or could be environmental. Okay. So, when we talk about the viral causes, guys, influenza, adenovirus, HSV, you know, uh, all these things can cause acute laryngitis. Bacterial causes again remain the same. Group A streptococcus being the very common. And the infectious type is more common. Usually it follows the upper respiratory tract infection. And first of all, you know, it is viral. Sometimes there could be secondary bacterial infection, which can be due to streptococcus, hemophilus, and many others, like all, all, all of them they can cause. And the non-infectious, which I told you, mechanical, it can be caused by abuse, low, low, like voice abuse and burns, it's like chemical burns or thermal burns, all these things, or even laryngeal trauma after endotracheal intubation. So simply, what are the symptoms? The symptom, remember, is hoarseness, and then the constitutional symptoms we have to remember. Same like, uh, there could be fever, there could be malaise, there could be uh, pain in the throat, there could be cough and the cough is mostly dry and it is irritating most of the time at the night and all those things will be there, right? Uh, so th this is how they present, okay? Aphonia can be there. When we examine their, their throat, how, how they appear, you know, you will found that the vocal cords are... Uh, swollen or red in color or erythematous in color okay so all the things will be there so simply guys whenever anyone have laryngitis okay uh, especially due to viral conditions that what happens you know it goes away by itself very 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 common thing many of us we get this thing so usually you know viral vi viruses uh, laryngitis caused by viral infections they get resolved within one week we can we can advise the patient to do some voice rest or sometime humidification or take care of their hydration avoid any irritants like smoking and if it is bacterial of course treat like how you treat pharyngitis start the antibiotics but again our discussion today is not acute but rather uh, chronic laryngitis okay so uh, Chronic laryngitis, as you can see, is when the infection is for more than two weeks, right? We call it as chronic laryngitis. And again, they have a lot, a lot, a lot, uh, what you can say, causative organisms which are there. Okay. So, uh, when we talk about the chronic laryngitis, as you can see, uh, chronic laryngitis is defined as like when the infection like inflammation is there for more than two weeks now it is 
it could be chronic laryngitis without hyperplasia which is also called as chronic hyperemic laryngitis or it could be chronic hypertrophic laryngitis in which there is uh, hyperplasia is there right so one is without hyperplasia one is with hyperplasia so we will discuss both of them what is hyperemic laryngitis it's a, it's a diffuse inflammatory condition which is symmetrical and it involves the whole larynx the true cords ventricle bands ventricular bands intraarytenoid region and root of epiglottis etiology see you can see it can uh, come from unresolved acute simple laryngitis or presence of chronic infection and exposure of irritants like occupational factors dust fumes gold and iron smiths general irritants pollution smoking alcohol someone who have persistent trauma of cough has in chronic lung disease or in chronic smokers who have lung carcinomas or vocal abuse can be there so how they present they present with hoarseness constant howling okay what is why they have constant howling because you know there is dryness in their throat and they keep on clearing their, their throat all the time <clears throat> like this right because they feel discomfort in throat and they had cough as well and when you will examine them you will found like the throat is hyperemic and the vocal cords appear dull red and rounded sometimes flecks of whiskered mucus can be seen on the cords treatment is simple eliminate the infection of upper or lower respiratory tract whatever is there treated even if tuberculosis is treated avoidance of the irritants voice rest steam inhalation so what steam inhalation do see it loosen up the excretion and give relief and we can give them expectorants cough syrup expectorants the other one is chronic hypertrophic again it could be diffuse it could be symmetrical most of the time or it could be a localized one so it could be diffuse it could be symmetrical it could be a localized one so simply what happens in this one you can see over here pseudo stratified ciliated epithelium of respiratory mucosa changes to squamous type so it is alteration and mucus epithelium of the vocal cords to hyperplasia and keratinization the mucus glands suffer hypertrophy at first but later undergo atrophy with diminished secretion and dryness of larynx right this is what is going on in this one so most of the time it is the males which are the mostly affected eight times more affected 30 to 50 years of age they present with hoarseness again howling dry cough and examination shows that the laryngeal mucosa is dusky red and thickened vocal cords appear red and swollen and ventricular bands appear red and swollen and mobility of the cords gets impaired due to edema and how we treat it eliminate the infection avoidance of irritants voice rest steam inhalation cough expectorants which are the general things which we do in the other form as well and surgical treatment is stripping of vocal cords removing the hyperplastic tissue which is present okay but of course there there is risk of damaging other structures so one cord is operated at a time in these patients easy topic guys not so hard remember the like there are different causes or different other types of laryngitis as well one is called as atrophic laryngitis which is also called as laryngitis cica but it is not so common atrophic laryngitis as as the name shows you know there is atrophy of the mucosa <clears throat> that condition is mostly commonly most commonly seen in women <coughs> there could be tuberculosis of larynx in that one we we give them atts and there could be syphilis which can affect larynx and all these things there could be fungal infections of larynx as well but of course not so common very rare 
so that's all for today's lecture guys okay that's our topic for today that we had to cover like this not today like this week you can say we had to cover chronic pharyngitis chronic laryngitis and epiglottitis okay so thank you so much for your time